I decided to record it, Chair, and then I will do it, I will put it on YouTube later. Okay, that's great. Um, <clears throat> in which case, um, good evening and welcome to members, officers, the press and public joining us tonight for the Strategic Development Committee. Um, this meeting will be posted on YouTube later on for people to enjoy. <clears throat> so welcome to those who are dialing in after the fact. Um, most officers are joining this evening's meeting via Zoom. Can I check that those online can all hear me? Thumbs up, thank you very much. And those in the hall, are you all able to hear me as well? Yes, that's true. Thank you. Um, my name's Councillor Rachel Tripp. I'm the Chair of Strategic Development, and I'll be chairing the meeting tonight. Um, for members in the room, as ever, when you're speaking, can you please speak clearly and loudly so that the microphone can pick up what you say? Um, for those joining by Zoom, as ever, please mute your microphone if you're not speaking. Um, I'll now ask the members of the committee and officers to introduce themselves. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Colleen Lee Park, Plasto South Councillor. I'm um, Councillor John Morris, uh, Councillor for Plasto West and Canada Tannies, and I'm a member of this committee. Councillor Madeline Sally Punson, Councillor for Forest Gate South. Thank you. And if I could suggest that um, officers introduce themselves in the order in which they appear in the agenda. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. I'm Jane Custance. I'm the Director of Planning and Development. Good evening. I'm James Bolt, Senior Development Manager. I'm Peter Minnelli, Pace Officer. Thank you. I think we do have some other officers joining us, so I'll, I'll ask you to come in as and when the spirit takes you. <laughs> uh, thanks, Chair. I'm Alex O'Dwyer, Solicitor. I'm Ben Hull, I'm Strategic Design Manager. Marina Lai, Principal Planner. Thank you and welcome. Um, I want to remind members, as ever, when a vote is taken, it will be by way of raising our physical hands in order that we can capture that on screen. <laughs> um, item number one is apologies. Do we have any apologies? Um, yes, Chair. Yeah, apologies from absence. We see some Council Ms. Carney and Council at our home in Distinct Verdi and Toby Johnson. Thank you. Are there any additional apologies? Chair, yeah, Councillor Joshua Garfield. Thank you. Um, item number two is the minutes of the meeting held on the 24th of April for approval. Um, I had a couple of minor amendments, which are just on page 12 and page 14, um, which are just typos of the word mind, so that we she confirmed she had an open mind. And then I think on, on page 14, um, it was literally a missing letter. Um, so nothing that changes the minutes substantively. If I pass those to the clerk, um, are members present content to agree those as a correct record? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Item number three is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest for the item tonight? No chair. No chair. Thank you. Item number four, determining planning applications. Members are asked to note the advice from the Head of Legal Services on determining planning applications. Is that noted? No. Noted. Thank you. Mm. Announcements from the Chair is item number five. Um, we've received the following requests to address the committee. Um, could I ask the speakers identify themselves when I call out your name? Item number six, we have Edward Mays. Um, Chris Gascoigne. Um, Simon Fryer, Ezra Groskin, Alastair Buckle, Julie Linkbank, Krista Zach Zacharia, Ian Saville, Andrew Lord, Martin Reed, and Babak Samangue. Thank you. The usual practice is to allow up to five minutes in total for both supporters and objectors. Is that agreed? Agreed, agreed. Thank you. Can we also agree the remainder of the order of business as outlined on the agenda? Agreed. agreed. Thank you. Um, would members please also note the officer update report, which was circulated earlier today? Thank you, Chair. So please note the full consideration and planning assessment is covered comprehensively in the committee report. I know members will have had due regard to it. So the officer presentation will be a summary of the key issues only. Um, can I please call upon the applicants team for item six to address the committee? I will do a, a five minute timer on my phone and I'll endeavor to indicate or wave in some way when you get to two minutes before the end. 
Um, but if I'm listening really hard, I might forget to do that. So if I do jump in, I'm sorry about that. Good evening, Chair and Members. Thank you for the opportunity to present tonight. My name is Ed Mays. I'm a project director from Lendlease for the Silvertown Keys project. I represent the applicants, the Silvertown Partnership. I'm joined by various members of the team who have just introduced themselves. And we're here tonight and delighted to present this planning application that comprises a new Royal Victoria pedestrian and cycle bridge and refurbishment of an existing jetty. This application follows Newham's 2016 planning permission for the regeneration of the Silvertown Quays site to the south of Royal Victoria Dock. We've been progressing enabling works on that site for over a year. And in June next month, we'll start the first building comprising 105 affordable homes. Last year, we also submitted a new master plan application for that site, reduced the number of non-residential uses, providing instead more homes, including 50% affordable homes. Hope to bring that separate planning application to complete later this year. I'd like to talk briefly about some of the significant public benefits this bridge application will bring in the context of both Newham and GLA policy objectives. Firstly, a new north-south route across the dock connecting existing and future communities. Secondly, it will shorten travel times to Custom House Elizabeth Line Station, reducing pressure on the DLR, DLR stations to the south of the dock. And thirdly, it will create for the first time step-free access across the dock for all users. And fourthly, it will provide a safe route for users with good pass surveillance and lighting. I'd also like to share a few points on design. Our bridge design team have a great track record having delivered exemplary design bridges in both the UK and abroad. I'd like to thank them and Newham officers and its DRP panel who provided advice during the pre-app process that has helped inform the final design. This has included widening the bridge to ensure capacity for not only users of our Silvertown Keys site, but also all other existing and future developments. The bridge will connect our new development at Silvertown Keys with the public realm to the west of Excel and to the north of Victoria Dock. Locations defined by the 2016 Planning Commission, shown by the red squares on this plan. It's designed to interface with the existing high level bridge, avoid no build zones around Excel, shown in the red dashed line, and enable large and small boats to pass through prescribed navigation channels, shown in the blue dashed line. It also has an opening mechanism to support large boats, which is shown in that slide. Bureau Hapold have incorporated large span structural elements to enable prefabrication and mitigate safety risk associated with working water. We have two minutes left, just to let you know. Moxon have a simple, impressed. elegant design with architectural merits. It will both maximise views of the dock and provide delight to users. It's already been seen worthy of celebration in the architectural press. Finally, I'd like to share with the committee TSP's commitment to delivery of the bridge. Speedy delivery is supported by local residents with whom we have been having significant engagement since 2019 and is indeed reflected in your own consultation for this application with over 4,000 people consulted and no objections. Should the committee grant planning permission, our TSP's intention is to commence delivery of the bridge early next year. In anticipation of this, we've already started to procure a main contractor and we are targeting the bridge to be complete before our re first residential building in summer 2025. <clears throat> I'm happy to confirm that TSP is committed to ensuring the delivery process creates skills, training, and employment opportunities for new residents. So in summary, bridge the bridge application will provide a wide range of public benefits, existing and new communities. The design has been involved in partnership with Newham and is both functional and beautiful. And TSP is primed to progress delivery as soon as permission is achieved. I sincerely hope that members will agree with the officer's recommendation to grant planning permission for this application. Thank you for your time. We look forward to your questions. Thank you. That's almost exactly to time. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, <clears throat> could we perhaps move to the officer presentation and then we'll have questions to either applicants or officers at the end.
Sorry, Joe, I'm just waiting to uh, see if my presentation pops up. Shirley, would it happen automatically or do I need to? It should happen. We tested it earlier, didn't we? Just make sure you still got screen lights. No longer seem to be on. Um, yeah, we've got. Do you want to try sharing your screen again now? With me. That's no problem. Uh, can you just, are you able to just over here for a second? I've made you, can you try again? I've made you actually hope now, so. Okay. I mean, I'm the host. I'm trying to click. Just queen first. Whilst we're waiting, um, the Morris, did you have a question that was particularly directed at the applicants? I have a few questions. <laughs> okay, shall I? Um, and we do normally have them after the officer presentation, but there's no particular reason why that should be. So, do, um, do you want to start off, perhaps? Okay. Um, so, um, really interesting design. Uh, I love what it calls active travel, including pedestrian and cycle travel, uh, especially north-south, because it, there was a big barrier uh, in terms of the world dots. But um, I do have a few questions, and what caught my eye was TS TfL's uh, constructive contribution to the consultation. Um, so I mentioned um, that the material should keep in mind of preventing slip deck resistance. So as on, so for example, if you're cycling across the bridge, if it's whether it prevents slipping by pedestrian, pedestrians, but also by the cyclists. Um, and actually, uh, I did see on page 67, paragraph 139, that the jetty would be uh, slip deck resistant, but actually, um, I saw nothing in the report that the bridge itself would be slip deck. Um, secondly, I believe there was a uh, uh, mention of the other bridge, Rodmar. So there were significant concerns about the maintenance of the old bridge and whether um, this bridge would be uh, well maintained as well. But also, I, mean, I think I saw in the report that one of the conditions that should be attached to it should be that uh, in exchange for uh, providing planning permission for this bridge, uh, improvements to the old bridge uh, should be included. Um, and that's question number two. Okay, well, should we take those ones first? Um, I wonder um, who amongst you would like to address the, the question of the surface of the bridge and its slip distance? Absolutely. Um, this is the so the paving will be uh, specified in accordance with the specification for highway works. So it will have the requisite sort of resistance. Like okay. Um, and and would that would that form part of the conditions of the planning? Yeah, I was just about to say you've got detailed conditions regarding submission of detailed design, including the the surface materials and and all of the the external materials. Sure. And my second question about conditions about the uh, supporting, well, one, uh, what will be the long-term maintenance of this bridge? Mm -hmm. 
um, perhaps Rodmer should be heard because if I understand it clearly, they will be the ones that maintain but also what conditions are there, where they're taken. Was a recommendation from TfL regarding the maintenance of the, and the upgrade of the old bridge taken up? Okay, well, could we maybe deal with maintenance of this proposed bridge first, and then we could perhaps move on to the existing bridge? Let's start with obviously that there was a, a decision taken to retain the existing bridge, because it obviously provides an important function. Um, this application doesn't concern the existing, obviously it's a different site. Existing bridge is, um, if I'm wrong, but it's managed by GLA Land and Property and Rodma. Rodma. Rodma, yeah. And um, the, our obligation in this consent is to ensure that, that the whilst we're constructing our new bridge, that the, the current bridge is, is maintained in full operational value. Now, there's no proposals as part of this to, to upgrade and, um, and improve the existing bridge. It's part, part of a, kind of a separate process. Separate ship, but we, we yeah. understand GLA and Rodma are looking at those upgrades at the moment. I mean, the lifts haven't worked for a long time, the yeah. lighting, etc. So looking at the programme of work, and we're kind of... Sorry, Chair, I was referring to, I think it was a comment by TfL, but it should be recommended as one of the conditions. Perhaps a, a question that the officer should answer. Perhaps we could come back to that when we're able to do the, um, <clears throat> do the screen sharing. So in terms of the ongoing maintenance of this proposed bridge, um, who was responsible for that and over what time period and what kind of assurances can we have that it's not going to become as has happened to the existing bridge, which is for people who can't use the can't use the stairs, largely decorative. So ownership of the bridge will stay with the developer, will be passed on to the estate as part of the public realm of the estate, and it'll be paid for by a combination of service charges of properties on the estate, as well as uh, commercialisation of the estate will help contribute towards it. Okay, and when you say it's passed on to the estate, what organisation is that that manages the estate? Uh, it's an estate management company okay. established already to manage that estate for the long term. Okay, and and forgive me. So, what um what would be the process therefore if there were issues with the maintenance of the bridge? If it was if some of the circuits had come loose, or you know, we're obviously we're very used as councillors to people contacting us to let us know about the pavements and roads. Yeah. Um. And what is there an equivalent process for that? In, indeed, because that estate company would be responsible for all the roads and public spaces in the Silvertown Key site. Okay. So, your responsibility for the bridge as well. Okay, and would, would there be sort of accessible information online, for example, to show where people could flag any issues or need for repairs or? Yeah, there will be when it's yeah, established. Okay. Flag as well, Chair, um, item three of your section one of six heads of terms goes into quite a lot of detail about the future operation and man maintenance commitments that your officers and us have agreed. Okay. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, I can see that we've resolved the IT issue, so we're ready for the officer report. Are you happy to hold on to your question? All right. Peter, can I hand you over to you for your officer's report? Thank you, Chair. Apologies for that. Um, yeah. And it might well be a case of um, after Lord Mayor's show, um, given the, the, the first presentation, but here we go. Um, one item, obviously, in um, Silvertown Keys, Royal Victoria Dock Bridge. Um, we bit of context. Um, that's the application red line boundary. It is as large as it is because I understand there may be a need to use some of the um, the wider site for um, deliveries and storage of construction materials. Um, so that's the uh, the reason for the the quite expansive red line that we have there. Um, that is the proposal, uh, which I won't read to you because everyone knows what it is. Key planning considerations, uh, we'll skip through those um, in my presentation. That's uh, site context. Um, you can see the existing bridge, um, the jetty, and the wider Silvertown Key site. Um, in terms of, I think there was one or two images shown in the applicant's presentation, but landing points on the north are just to the east of the bow of the, I think it's the Sunborn Hotel. Um, the southern landing point um, is just south of the light shift, which is quite handily coloured red um, in the dock uh, shown there. Um, 
terms of principle of development, um, uh, there's quite a weight um, of, of, of support. A, a condition that actually exists on the uh, original planning permission um, from 2016 that requires the delivery of the bridge um, in accordance with specific parameters. Um, so minimum width um, designed to be shared space and to allow navigation of the uh, dock to be maintained. That condition is supported by a section 106 clause. Actually, you're in the same thing. Um, in addition to, to, to that, uh, there are a number of policies which encourage the delivery of the bridge in the development plan. And we also have, and the adoption is imminent, the GLA's Royal Docks and Beckton Riverside Draft Opportunity Area Planning Framework, um, which identifies the bridge or bridge across the dock as a desired intervention, and one which, as I say there, or as it's shown there, would be transformative as a new north-south connection that unlocks as part of the opportunity area. Um, in terms of design considerations and constraints, uh, I'll skip quickly through these. There was the avoid to uh, there was the need to avoid the design weakness of the existing bridge, which, although it's striking, um, uh, was simply too high and proved and has proved difficult for um, people who are less mobile. To, to get across if the bridges, if the lifts in the bridge aren't uh, operating, which has tended unfortunately to be quite regular. Um, the new bridge would need to be step free and with a shallow gradient. It would need to minimize distance and travel time from the north to the south, uh, as has been highlighted before, it needs to maintain the dock navigation channel to allow vessels to access um, all areas. Um, there was the need to agree and observe the landing points that have been secured in the planning commission, ensure material quantities and to set the material qualities that should be, apologies, and sustainability. Uh, there was need to be mindful of costs and program. Um, importantly, to promote design quality and distinctiveness. Um, also a need to maximize the uh, superb views that you can sometimes get from around the dock, um, both east and west. Um, other design, well, final design consideration was to provide potentially areas to uh, well and rest. Bridge itself is 312 meters long. It's open in sections 27 meters long. Uh, its regular width is 5.8 meters. Um, increasing to 8.5 meters at uh, the curb sections or belvedere's as they are sometimes described. Um, there is a, a three meter clearance distance between water and the structure when the bridge is closed. And while open, the bridge will provide a 26 meter width. Um, and limited height clearance vessels. Uh, just a couple of pictures of the, the S or double S curves there, um, obviously being outdone by the presentation that we've seen before in terms of the open. Uh, just a little bit about uh, construction and materials. Um, yep, steel, continuous steel superstructure fixed onto V shaped steel columns, top of I think it's 12 
board concrete piles, um, structures protected by a vessel impact system. I, I don't think we've seen any of those on the images, but um, they're, they're quite obvious. They sit in the water and, and prevent any um, accidents when vessels are, are uh, going through the bridge. Um, Decks raised and lowered using hydraulic cylinders. We've seen that in action. Uh, we've also just well, we've also discussed already services. Um, they'll be determined by accessibility, maintenance, and safety requirements, and there will be obviously a condition um, through which that matter will be considered. Um, One point four meter handrail slash parapet. Um, that is deemed uh, safe for cyclists. The lighting will be incorporated into that uh, parapet system. Um, again, it's not absolutely clear on, on some of the images, but there will be gates uh, uh, across the bridge, two sets of gates. Um, they're safety gates, obviously, to ensure um, that everyone's kept safe when the bridge uh, opens and closes. Uh, condition is uh, suggested to allow further consideration of the detail of those, de of those gates. Um, there's also uh, a condition attached which will look at some of the signage, totems and barriers as you enter the bridge at the north and south landing stages. Some of the images do show those um, those features. Um, just briefly uh, on the jetty, 120 meters long, 10 meters wide. Um, there is how uh, has been a, a concerted attempt to maintain as much as possible of the the the, the retained jetty um, for heritage reasons. Uh, there's quite a quite a few little nice features that uh, the applicant is proposing to, to keep. Um, obviously, officers welcome this. Uh, main interventions to the jetty are, or will be some uh, new seating uh, and some uh, planting. Uh, again, the, both of those elements will have a kind of maritime industrial feel um, so that there is a, a sort of jarring uh, of styles, if you like, with um, 100 150 year old uh, industrial feature. Uh, the jet itself will be potentially host to cultural events, um, artwork, and food and beverage. Um, the likelihood is with the latter, or perhaps the two latter elements, there will need to be separate applications made to. Um, consider those. In terms of heritage, um, yep, there's no conservation areas or World Heritage Sites or scheduled monuments in the vicinity. Uh, there are, however, a number of listed uh, features, not least the cranes around the dock. Um, there is also the Grade 2 Silo D, further to the south, um, and a couple of warehouses uh, on the northern uh, side of the dock. Uh, these were obviously considered uh, by officers and their impact, or the, the bridge's impact on the on these features. Um, the outcome or the conclusion was uh, that there would be no substantial harm to these uh, to these features. I might also include the Millennium Mills, the locally listed uh, building. Um, the uh, general rule of thumb where it comes to uh, uh, development that is that causes less than substantial harm um, is that you balance that against the benefit, uh, the benefits, the public benefits of the scheme. Um, officers concluded that given the uh, undoubted public benefits uh, that the uh, weight of, of harm was not, uh, was not substantial.
In terms of uh, bridge linkages, uh, and comfort and safety, uh, uh, this is looking generally at the um, the issue in regards to shared usage um, and where people and cyclists will go once off the bridge. Um, but it will in itself obviously provide a convenient, safe and step-free pedestrian linkage um, north to south of the, the dock. Uh, the proposals complement the Siltown Master Plan, enhancing con connectivity and an anticipated vibri vibrancy of the um, southern bank um, of the, uh, the dock. Proposals in keeping with TfL's Healthy Streets agenda, enable, enable, enabling people to walk and cycle more regularly and utilise nearby active travel routes. Um, there were a series of uh, quite complicated tests done in terms of uh, looking at the bridge and whether or not it would be safe for shared usage. Um, all of those tests were favourable. Um, and determined that things would be absolutely fine. Just briefly on avi aviation safety, um, the bridge does stand within the Western Public Safety Zone uh, of London City Airport, jetties outside. Um, bridge was assessed to present no risk to operational safety and efficiency of the airport. Um, London City Airport themselves. Um, were quite clear in their consultation response that there would be no conflict with the safeguarding criteria um, subject to a couple of conditions on cranes and lighting. Uh, just a few other additional planning matters that um, are worth mentioning. Uh, bridge was designed obviously to uh, minimise energy consumption. Uh, renewable energy, for obvious reasons, wasn't feasible. Um, there was also a minimization, where possible, on the carbon emissions front. Um, the bridge scored uh, favorably on the urban green factor and biodiversity net gain scores. Um, Officers were satisfied with the flood risk assessment, um, which concluded no risk of flooding to bridge or jetty. Um, proposal to acknowledge secure by design principles. Just on that particular point, um, I'm aware that in Newham and across London, there have been um, some, certainly there can be some concerns um, about security and, and antisocial behaviour um, where you cite seating um, on uh, oh, and propose public community space. Um, what I would do is highlight condition 27, um, which requires the applicant to provide a sort of management um, strategy, um, which um, we'll be able to consider. Um, just at the bottom there, I have mentioned the environmental statement, um, which indicates that no significant environmental impacts uh, would result from the, the construction of the bridge say, jetty. Um, and where necessary, there has been sufficient mitigation provided. Um, finally, um, it's worth highlighting the key heads of terms. Um, this isn't exhaustive, um, that's on the, the, the heads of terms in, in its entirety is that committee report. But I'm um, just skipping through these, jetting to be delivered no later than six months after the bridge is opened, existing bridge access arrangements to be maintained during the construction period, up to 35% of construction roles to be new residents, um, those figures on apprenticeships and internships um, have been cited before in the previous presentation. Um, two reports or plans, they, those be maintenance and management and operational management required. Um, 
24-7 access subject to exceptions, quite obvious ones uh, that I mentioned, uh, that I referred to there. Uh, and also at those times when Excel are allowed to close their, the existing public protected route on the north landing stage, um, adequate notice is needed or is required to be provided to the council. Um, dawn to dusk access to the jetty and also TFL wayfinding strategy and a contribution would be required. Uh, and that completes my presentation, Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> um, if you're able to stop sharing your screen, that would be helpful, um, but I'll give you a moment. Um, John, could we come back to the question that you had earlier, and then I see um, Councillor Sali Ponto and then Councillor Alarm. Um, which one specific? That you had a question that we agreed we were going to address to the officer after <laughs> he'd done his presentation, which had clean gone out of my head, but can you recall it? Yes. So uh, I think it was in TFL's consultation, there was a recommendation that uh, certain conditions would be applied to this planning application regarding the upgrade of the existing bridge. Uh, in terms of the existing bridge, uh, a couple of points to note. Um, one is that it was actually without outside the application boundary. Um, nevertheless, the applicant has indicated uh, that um, they have discussed the uh, maintenance of the existing bridge with Rodma. Um, and my understanding, and the applicant may well be able to confirm this, is that they will be uh, <coughs> making a contribution to Rodma to allow a uh, uh, keep um, of the bridge to be made, uh, of the existing bridge to be made. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm also happy to take that away as an action for me to contact the, um, I think it's Royal Victoria councillors, um, who I'm sure are in touch with Rodma in any case, with their concerns about the bridge as a kind of existing and faulty piece of infrastructure, and just add to the work that I'm sure they're doing the concerns of the committee as well. Um, Councillor Sally Ponton, I think you were next. Thank you, and thank you ever so much for taking that matter forward. Um, if you have ever had to get up those stairs, no, you haven't, which I don't know why you're nodding. If you had had to get up those stairs to that bridge with a buggy and with a small child, because in the time that you've been in Barrier Park, the lift is broken, and to get home, you have to go up the lift one side and then down the other side with a large, actually not a buggy, a pram, and a small child. I can tell you it is stressful, tiring, and very difficult, okay? So, and that's, my youngest is now 21. So that tells you how long it's been a problem. Okay, my actual questions then, please. Um, first of all, questions are related to comfort and safety because the design of the bridge looks lovely. The use of, uh, of the, uh, the water, both as a strolling place, a, uh, what's, the, what's the phrase that's been used? A dwelling? Place to dwell. Place to dwell. I knew it wasn't a dwelling place. That's something different. Mm -hmm. But for a place to stroll and to have that feel of a, of a meandering pier is lovely. That's really great. Um, my concerns are that, um, particularly as there will now be two ways to cross the, uh, the dock, that the, the bridge may in itself become seen as a cycle route only by people using it. I'm glad to see that you've got your Belvedere's, which will mean, of course, that people will have to um, uh, adjust their speed and their, well, we hope they'll adjust their speed and their direction um, to cope with those. But my concern is partly that there doesn't appear to be any formal barrier between the public and the pedestrians, that you're going to have four lanes of traffic at least, each of which will need to have space to overtake. Um, and I'm concerned that uh, pedestrians, people with disabilities, people in wheelchairs, people again with prams and buggies, people with visual impairments are going to be moving at a much slower rate than, as we know, cyclists can do. Aren't you, John? You can go very fast at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as we know in Newham already, uh, we already have a lot of cyclists that are choosing to mingle 
with the pedestrians more than they should do. So that's my that's my big concern is that there's not a clear um, demarcation of space for different users. One question. I wanted to ask if there was going to be any way of slowing people down as they enter and exit the bridge. And by that, I mean particularly, again, people on um, cycles, electric bicycles, and will there be a way of ensuring that we don't get motorcyclists on the bridge as well? Um, so my colleague has asked about the maintenance of the bridge, which is great. Um, my third point was, uh, and that, that's it, Chair, is about lighting, okay? I made comments about antisocial behaviour um, uh, planning officer with regards to speaking and things like that. I haven't gotten concerns about that, okay? My concerns are that the, the lighting looks very pretty, and look just reflecting off of the, um, reflecting and bouncing water. It, it's seems to be in the pictures, and maybe I'm wrong, to be low level lighting, which again is very decorative. My concern is that as a pedestrian walking across the bridge with low level lighting, how are you going to be able to see ahead to any threat on the bridge in terms of people? Particularly as it's a 24 seven bridge, as it's a route between homes and public transport. Um, my concern is that it's going to be hard for people to set out on that long journey and be able to see ahead. We really don't want any Nordic noir type bridge moments. OK, uh, and that's kind of my concern, even though it does look gorgeous. Um, thank you. And um, did you perhaps want to address the concerns about shared space first? I'm happy to start and then colleagues may choose to, to add more information. So we, it's been a, a topic that we discussed a lot with your officers and your de designers. And sorry, sorry speaking up, it's a room with no... Yeah, understood. Sorry, I don't have a microphone. It's okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a topic that we discussed a lot with your officers, um, and it's all been about getting the width of the bridge right. So there's, there's guidance at national level, at TfL level and at Newham level around um, segregated spaces or not segregated spaces for cyclists and pedestrians. A, a really important objective from the, from the outset was to think of the bridge and design the bridge as an extension of the existing pedestrian and cycle route that exists along the dock edge, if you need, for example, to the south of XL, um, which isn't segregated, as you know, because it's wide enough and so it feels and is safe. So your officers kind of made us work really hard, actually, and we, we ended up increasing the width of the bridge through the pre-application process to a minimum of 5.8 metres. It goes out to actually 8.5 at those Belvedere's. Um, that, that significantly actually exceeds the guidance at national TFL and at Newham level. So it, it is all about the width um, in terms of why we believe it's safe. And there's been, as Peter mentioned, a lot of assessments, almost called pedestrian comfort, where you, you input the, the potential kind of maximum, let's call them worst case flows of kind of peak and um, cyclists in the AM and PM peak. And those assessments confirm that it would be safe because it's wide enough. So hopefully that's a an answer to that. I have a follow up. Yes. Is that okay, Chair? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Will there be any uh, demarcation on the floor? The intention is that there wouldn't be because of the width. So I think um, the plan isn't to have kind of like cyclists on one side and pedestrians on another through, as you say, demarcation. Um, be, and it's all about creating a width which results in a safe environment. Um, now that doesn't correct me wrong, but that doesn't stop us in the future if, for whatever reason, the width is not enough and people are are um uh making it unsafe by the way that they use it we could change things in the future to demarcate it but we don't think that's the right thing to do from the outset and again correct me if i'm wrong that's i understand from a design point of view yeah. that i don't necessarily wish to do that and i understand that you've met the constraints of yeah. um all levels of uh governance and health and safety rules with regard that sorry so you want sorry is it somebody else had their hands up they wanted to contribute in terms of demarcation you are actively marketing the space. Can I just get you to raise your voice a bit? Sorry, just not only so we can hear, but also so when this is put oh, online as well. Yeah, so basically, in terms of marketing, it's actually creates an illusion of priority. So it's actually more. So we're trying to create until, you know, uh, until it's like the space. But if you mark, then people think that's priority of our space, part of the shared space. They'll have to start off faster, and then when you get to the other ends, there is no segregation. I still on the ends, so you're coming up on the segregated marked space. 
the shared space, that keeps less safe. Okay. The shared space for people who can see each other. To the right side. And how about the, the question about slowing down on entrance and exit? Is there, a, is there a physical way of slowing cyclists down as they, em, as they enter and exit the bridge? Is that something that would be desirable? People are also creating example, plans and other I, I believe in some designs there's the equivalent of the cycle cattle grid, which is the slightly bumpy raised grids in, in the uh, pavement. I don't know whether that would be appropriate, simply to just make them calm down and not on and off uh, when you've got people who may be dwelling, uh, having a, a little dwell at, at, get on and on, off, um, and therefore up as a barrier with, to somebody who's moving very fast. I'm keen to um, pick up a question about how we prevent motorbikes from going over the bridge as well. So I think it's the same answer as can motorcyclists get onto the existing pathway around the dock because that's what we're connecting into. Um, and I'm aware that obviously there, there are various bollards um, up on the other side of XL which prevent vehicles. Um, I don't see that they fully prevent somebody if somebody wanted to get on a motorbike and, and go down there. I don't think we can kind of physically completely prevent that, but obviously it, it would be a criminal activity to do so. Yeah. Um, again, that's, that's signage. Physical ability that's, to stop that's individuals that's doing it. Into, yeah. Yeah. Will there be signage indicating this is a pedestrian? Yeah, absolutely. Because as I said, it's a continuation of that pedestrian cycle um, dock, the, the route that goes all the way around the dock edge. Um, and that's the only way you can access it is via those existing routes. And, and ours in John Silver Town. Adam's final question was about lighting and safety. Yeah, I mean, lighting is really important, as is kind of still. So creating a safe environment is our number one priority. Um, the majority of the lighting is in the parapets, in the, the kind of railings. Yeah. That's all about creating an even glow. We're looking at kind of lux levels, making sure it's the right amount of level, lighting people's faces as well as the lighting surface. So we are doing calculations to make sure we're providing like a uniformly even that it's from So that's. But if it's a okay. back. Yeah, sorry, if I make chair. If it's a waste, if the light is waist level and down. It's kind of up to about uh, chest level and it will be reflecting off the surface and yeah. up into up into yeah. Okay, if it's from this level down and I'm 200 away from something towards me, will I see them? You should be, yeah. It should, it should kind of illuminate their face. Okay, I think I think I would like some further assurance. Is that a type of lighting that's been used elsewhere? Yes. Where? We do. There is um, condition twenty two in your recommendation is around the submission of full details of external lighting. Mm -hmm. So as, as the, the the final lighting strategy evolves, we'll also, your officers will be required to approve that. And um, correct if I'm wrong, Peter, but I imagine the safety aspect of that will be a key consideration as well as the the aesthetics of it. Yeah. It's perhaps it's I could direct that to officers and ask that the committee is really concerned about visibility um, in terms of safety as well as wayfinding. Um, and I'm sure that officers do that condition with the applicant, which I'm sure that you would want to pursue as well. Um, Asawa, you were next, and then I can see Carleen, and then I'll come back to John. Thank you, Chair. Um, I actually like the design of the, the bridge. I think it's good. Um, I saw the jetty, you know, the, the design of the jetty. However, I do have two concerns. First, looking at page three, uh, 100, I'm show there's going to be 230 cycles around America, throughout the whole day. And going then to pay. Sorry, uh, page, uh, page 51. Um, here was a comment here on, on cycle parking. So, is my understanding correct? Or have I done something wrong? Has it been a misprint that there's zero car parking spaces? Is that right? 
the company. Okay, and then, well, my follow-on question is, by and to, how does TFL's comments here mitigate the proposal here? So, I mean, the, you know, as a council and as a borough, of course, we're promoting cycling. It's, it's you know, it's something we want, but, and having the bridge will promote more cyclists. However, does not contradict basically the whole idea of this bridge where you're going to have more cyclists coming, but they don't know where to park or, you know, including short stay. Apparently, there's no short stay park, a cycle parking as well. And a lot of these people are going to be using the bridge to use um, my standing can custom, custom house station, which already has an issue with car park, uh, cycle parking spaces. There's done enough. People are parking their cycles to railings and, and furniture nearby. So going back to what I originally said, 230 cycles per hour, I must think we an issue. Unless I've misread something here, but anything in, in the application to mitigate this issue. That's my first concern. And second concern is similar to my colleague, my left here, regarding um, shared spacing. Uh, I mean, maybe it's just a fundamental point here, but I just, I disagree. Um, and, I'm, and, and I haven't been convinced by it. By the applicant's answer on, on, on shared spacing, I can already imagine cyclists flying by on, on the bridge. It's a long bridge, you know, pedestrian getting hit. You know, we're going to have potentially disabled people walking on this bridge, pregnant women, women with double buggies and two children. And you know, fundamentally, I just cannot agree with shared spacing here. I think it should have been segregated. And, you know, the application is submitted, it's, it's, you know, it's not going to be changed. Um, so that is, that is a concern of mine, and, and I do echo the, the comments my colleague on the left has made. Cheers. Thank you. Um, could I perhaps bring you in on the issue of additional um, cycle parking spaces first? Um, so the, the bridge itself is a requirement of an existing planning permission for the redevelopment of Silvertown Keys. As we mentioned, we've also got a new application in to increase and provide 50% affordable housing. It's important to understand that the bridge is that kind of component part of development. And of course, when um, Lendlease and Silvertown Partnership bring forward the development on the main site, there'll be significant quantums of long stay, short stay cycle parking required under the London plan as part of that. Likewise, if when we look to the north, you've got the XL Exhibition Centre and you've got the station as well. Um, and it's, it's stated in, um, in the committee report here that XL are in the process of, of taking a look at their western entrance as well. And yeah, part of those will be conversations around cycle parking as well. So it's not that we're considering this in the absence of cycle parking. I think it's that the bridge is a component part of the regeneration of the wider area where there absolutely will be London plan compliant levels of short and long-stay cycle parking. So hopefully that places that into context, which is why TfL are asking the, exactly the same question. Um, we've we obviously talked about the shared spaces um, already. You've expressed your, your 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 opinion on that. As you say, the the application goes to kind of great lengths to explain and to test really thoroughly why we, we believe in this instance it is safe to to keep them segregated. And I think again, placing this bridge in the context of the existing cycle and pedestrian route around the dock edge, I think were there to be a decision in the future to segregate the whole of the the, the dock edge around the, um, uh, the cycle and pedestrian is around the dock edge, then there's probably a conversation we had about whether you do it for the bridge as well. But we don't think it's right that you do it for the bridge in isolation if then it's a shared route around the, the rest of the dock itself. And as I said, we've gone to kind of great lengths to explain why the width is gives it the best chance of being safe when it's non-segregated. And in terms of the existing path that this bridge is continuing, I know it didn't come up in the um, consultation responses we had, but you, are you aware of concerns from local residents about pedestrian safety on that shared space where it's already there? Uh, sorry, Chair, I'm not certain. Are you, I, I don't recall any of the objections focusing on that particular issue mm. I'm not I'm not aware I didn't I mean there, there weren't any objections to the application but there I'm I'm no, no, it obviously wasn't no, mentioned in any of the submissions no a, a lot I mean a, there were two or three of the submissions which <laughs> I suppose the concerns but they were other matters mm -hmm. mainly to do with the existing bridge um, and ensuring that that remains open and and operational um, I don't recall seeing. Okay. Um, um, I'm keen to bring in additional questions. I did have a couple myself as well. Councillor Lee Parkway. Jane Constance has put her hand up. Oh, 
Apologies, Jane, I hadn't noticed you'd raised your virtual hand. Did you want to come in on this issue? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was just going to say, um, back in the day when I actually worked on projects, um, one of the things that I did was work on something where there was a segregated um, cycleway um, through a town centre. And the idea there was that it was a kind of meandering pathway that was supposed to slow down the cyclists. But because they were segregated, they actually, it kind of acted like a cycle superhighway and the speeds were quite high. So what we did was um, take the segregated cycleway out and then have it as a sort of integrated space because the, and it did actually work that because the cyclists knew that they were sort of part of the sort of general um sort of pedestrian cyclist uh, traffic that they acted more responsibly and slowed down. But I was wondering whether on condition 20, where we've got public realm management, um, and I haven't discussed this with other officers, whether we would want to put something in that condition um, about um, potential for a future review, if it did turn out that there was a problem. It strikes me that that might be really helpful if that's something that the applicants would be happy with. I think potential review wouldn't necessarily have to be a segregation or not. It could be around looking at looking at signage or um, Councillor Sarley Ponton's suggestion of some way of physically slowing down cyclists. See, the, the important thing is we do want people to be able to safely cycle, um, but we're also aware that in the kind of hierarchy of people who move around the borough, pedestrians are our most vulnerable users, and also they are the most common as well. We're, we're all pedestrians in some form or other. Um, so that, that strikes me that it might be quite a useful... If there are safety incidents happen, we will want to review it as well. So, yeah, that happens. Yep. I think if we could if we could capture some form of review um, to make sure that the space is working safely, particularly for the most vulnerable pedestrians, um, that would be really welcome. Thank you. Um, Councillor Lee Parkway. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I have a few questions, if you don't mind. So I actually would agree with uh, Councillor Swa, who I mean, he talks about actually really like the idea of the design really like the way in which it's, it's connecting the two, the two different sides of the docks. I do, if, if it's at all possible, I don't know who's got sharing rights. Is there any chance that you could show us a visual of where it starts from over the Excel and where it lands over on the other side of the docks? Just want to just clarify, I can't really see it on the drawings. Would the, um, would the map go ahead of you do that? Or was yeah. it an actual picture? I just of want to see, head? so there were just some questions that I, I didn't want to ask if it has already been answered. But just looking at the aerial view of the existing site on page 158, the assumption I had was, and I remember the conversation being somewhere between Sunborn and Excel. Am I right in saying that? Do you know where the bridge lands? lands. It's, if, yeah, there you go. It's, if you're coming to the existing bridge, it's just to the left of that. Right. And if I'm, if I'm correct in saying, um, that, land, that bridge then lands directly by the side of Millennium Mills, yeah. which is where the new development will yeah. be of 6,500 properties-ish, around about, somewhere around there. Yeah? Hence, 2,900-odd people maybe walking across the bridge. Um, so I guess I had a couple of questions, um, and you would expect some of these questions. So I want to understand what the sensory experience is going to be. Um, for those young people, adults that have um, impairments, special education needs, disabilities, um, and so on and so forth. I want to understand how that would feel. Um, and I appreciate you might not be able to give me all those answers, but I'm sure if monks, all of you's here, the hundred of you's here, someone will be able to give me an answer. Um, I'm thinking about other bridges. So there's lots of conversations been had so far about do we segregate the cycle lanes do we not if we think about actually it being an available space for all um, and one of the bridges i know it's not the same bridge and i know it's a floating bridge or a wobbly bridge or whatever you want to call it bridge but if we think about the millennium bridge and how people come together in that space it works yeah sometimes it might not but that's just reality of life and i just want to understand the thoughts around bridges 
and how people interact on a bridge. Some are extremely scared, so they walk through it quickly. Some don't, they want to have a leisurely stroll. I'm thinking about pets, dogs off of leads, so on and so forth. I just want to understand what that experience would feel like. And then I also want to understand about the seating and what benefits that brings to that space. And I, I have an idea what those benefits are, but I also do, I'm thinking about things like risk. So security. So, and, and did you say three meters from the water? Yeah. So I did think about suicide prevention. So people jumping off of bridges. What, I haven't heard anything about that. And I do appreciate in the conditions 27 that you're gonna come back with a robust plan. But I would like to hear someone talk to it um, here and now before we, we give uh, any definite answer about this application. I want to understand about risk. Um, I also wanted to understand, there was, there was a part in the officer's presentation that talked about 24 seven access. However, um, it changes through public protected routes. And I want to understand what does that mean? Um, because I want to, does that mean that was, that bridge was shut because there's an event going on at the XL and for some reason people can't cross? Well, that, you know, when I think about the, the previous, what we've heard some other places about an application of that many properties, how would those people come in and out? Um, I want to just understand the impact. I also want to understand a bit around water pollution um, through the construction. Um, how is it we're going to prevent water pollution um, and the polluting of those docks during the construction? And there was another question I had, um, which was, what will the access be? And thinking about issues of, of safety, what would the access be for emergency vehicles, lifeboys, access to the water, um, whether it's accessing or exiting the water, um, if there was an emergency, what does that look like? Um, let me just check off giving you all my questions, construction, suicide, light, light pollution. So we talked about in condition, condition 2022 around the light, the lights, um, the external lighting scheme. What I did want to ask is if, for instance, you decided that those chest high lighting, whatever, um, didn't work, wasn't able to see someone 240 meters away. What would be the light pollution if any, if the lighting changed and how would that affect the residents that might be looking out onto that specific um, bridge or vice versa? Um, that was it. Oh, <laughs> I waited a long time. So I, I might as well get a wall in. Perhaps invite the applicants to respond to those issues in whichever order you so desire. Um, I might kick off and then you can kind of skip yeah, in. Okay, so um, you talked about the Millennium Bridge. Uh, we looked at the Millennium Bridge quite a lot in the design process for this. So that's 4.3 metres, which is substantially less wide than, and despite being in zone one, despite being between St Paul's and the Tate, which is you know, two of the biggest tourist destinations in London. And that bridge, as far as I'm aware, is you're allowed to I have cycled over that, but I'm, I'm a bit of a cyclist. I go much faster on uh, delineated routes than I do when it's on a shared surface. When I've cycled over that bridge with my daughters, when pedestrians have been walking, you weave through them and you get off your bike when you have to to, to, to walk through. So that bridge is interesting because people walk from either side to see the views. The shape of our bridge is going to encourage people to cross from one side to another to see the different views and different views back to Excel and across to our new site. So I think it's similar in the way it will be a bit of a destination in itself. It will encourage movement. It will encourage people to get into groups. And in fact, when we were working with Highways offices on the, we did quite intricate 3D modeling of pedestrians and cycles together in that space. And, and he insisted we model it so groups of people went across at once and paused and looked at views and how would cycles interact with that. And I'd never seen such modeling as, uh, as Eric did for us, but it actually demonstrated to, to Murray, head of highways, that it, he was happy with the, the space and, and the way the bridge was designed. Um, so in terms of how people interact, hopefully it will bring people together and make people celebrate the docks more, put the Royal Docks more on the map, make it a destination for London's. Um, the sensory experience, I'm not an expert on sensory experience. Uh, apologies. I don't know if any of our team are particular experts on. Uh, so we can look into that. I, I suspect you might be more of an expert than we are on this. <laughs> 
Um, but in terms of bringing people together and, and moving through the space, um, it will hopefully be quite a calm environment, but also there will be people moving around. So I guess in a similar way to is the Millennium Bridge mm. for that sort of environment, um, we'll have more space on ours, so it might be more suitable. But you maybe can tell us what you think on that rather than us to tell you. Um, uh, seating. Um, so the idea of the seating is because it is a bit of a journey, so you need places where people can rest who are less physically able. Um, we have, I think we have four Belvedere's. Um, and the question we've had through the pre app process, are seats necessary in all of those, or is it just maybe the central ones? Uh, because we don't want to necessarily encourage too much sitting going on. So we've got a condition, I believe, around the seating. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that will come yeah. out through that. Um, and it may be that some of the other areas are used for other bits, like could it be art, could it be sad signage? Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the cost of maintenance is paid for by service charge and commercialization. So one of the conditions is we might satisfy is putting in some advertising reporting, which will give public notices, but also potentially advertising to help pay for maintenance. Um, uh, uh, security and suicide protection. So we're very conscious the existing bridge has that reputation and is used for people who um, unfortunately who have that intent. Um, our bridge starts at dock level and then goes up to three metres in its central location. Uh, so it's three metres from, from the top through to the water, um, which is much safer than the existing bridge, which are so you know the height of the existing bridge. 50 metres. So, okay. so mm -hmm. given that bridge will still be there, if people really are inclined to do that, they yeah. choose our bridge. They, I imagine they will choose the other bridge. There are CCTV cameras on the other bridge, and Rob can manage that. Similarly, we'll, we'll have some sort of CD, CCTV coverage of ours, but I suspect the risk will still remain with the existing bridge rather than the new. Um, access. Uh, uh, so this is the XL point. <laughs> have the ability to close the public realm that our bridge will connect into uh, uh, up to 60 days per year through the planning com yeah. commission. Um, we can't change that. When that is closed, our bridge won't be able, people won't be able to exit from our bridge, so we will have to close our bridge. And we'll probably close it at the southern end to prevent the safety risk of people getting to the north and then trying to climb over barriers. Mm. So um, we're, we're at a bit of the will uh, command of Excel. It's not in our interest to close the bridge because you know, the bridge will be a key route from all our residents and workers to get to our site from the Elizabeth line. So we don't want to, but we will have to at certain points. Um, water pollution. Yes, so you asked about water pollution and um, light pollution as well. So there, there are planning conditions that goes quite a lot of detail about that. There's a, there's a need to submit what's called a, a construction environmental management plan, which has many prongs. To, um, that is condition number eight in your agenda. Um, includes details of construction lighting strategy. Um, it also includes um, the site waste management plan, air quality and dust management, and construction water management plan in um, strand F of that conditions. A detailed um, application, like a mini application in effect that we need to make that goes into the, the full potential pollution impacts during construction. I think it's worth highlighting as well that there was an environmental statement provided uh, the application, um, statutory application. Um, and that environmental statement um, focused on one of the issues it focused on was uh, water pollution and, and it gave the uh, construction process a, a clean bill of health. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. And I think the other um, comment that Car Carleen raised was about emergency access. Are you talking in the water or? Yeah, well, throughout the whole space. So. You, you spoke earlier that there are bollards or some type of to stop motorcycles or whatever. Yeah, but how, how would that be if there was a emergency? Are you imagining, for example, if there was a medical emergency in yeah. the middle of the bridge and someone needed assistance? Yes. Yeah, so the, the bridge is designed for an emergency vehicle. It has to ha it has to have maintenance vehicles on it. There are heavy pieces of equipment which might, at some point yeah. in its life, need to be replaced, for example. There are bollards at the end of the bridge which prevent unauthorised vehicle access. 
but one of those will be removed also. Okay, so level. And is that is sorry? Could you come through me, please? I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry. Did you have a follow up question? Thank you. Um, two with regards to safety, picking up on what my colleague has um, mentioned already. So, with the um, the removal of bollards, should there be unfortunately either an accident or somebody having a heart attack in the middle, something like that, who is around to manage that raising and or taking out of bollards? So the estate will have um, people maintaining and managing the estate continuously on, on the southern end, at least, in terms of the Excel estate uh, and accessing their... Well, so yeah, Excel manage their, their current estate at the moment. And I think, actually, if you needed to get an ambulance onto, like, the Dock Edge Path, for example, I think there's a barrier up on the other side of Royal Victoria Square, which is which I think is managed by Excel. So, again, in the, in the event of a need for an emergency vehicle to come down there, they have the ability to do that, and obviously lend least do on the southern side. Perhaps we could again ask officers just to take that away, and just and just to make sure that the arrangements for emergency access um, are made clear. I, I did. Chair, sorry, chair. I think and as part of the one hundred and six, and and or regional plan, and I'm almost something like this would be need to be captured mm -hmm. yeah. well could i could i perhaps ask you to make sure that it is yeah. thank you um i did have one question i know john came back with another and then i'm keen to move us on to the vote i know we only have one item this evening but i don't see that we need to <laughs> one yeah. clock, as long as we would if we had four or five <laughs> um several of the residents when they responded um welcomed a new crossing um but had some really fundamental queries about first of all the kind of shape of the bridge and also the actual placement um and they said they felt that a, a bridge that was more perpendicular to the river would be more useful i know that is dealt with briefly in the papers but i wondered if you could just take us right back to that first principle please about the over the placement and the design of the bridge which obviously when you see it here with the two bridges and the two entrances very close to each other um it does seem a little bit counterintuitive should i start go on then <laughs> so uh, i'm reminding going back to the very beginning of the presentation we have an, an obligation under the current planning commission to build the bridge and the plan identifies these two zones as where the bridge should land so that, that was our starting point. Yep. But so the, the reasons for that. So let's start on the northern side next to XL. Of course, that is the most direct route to get up to the crossrail station, which we think the vast majority of people using the bridge from the south will want to get to. Um, and then if you look at the proximity to Millennium Mills, in there is that that will take you through the new master plan in a street that takes you down directly to North Village Road and to Royal Wharf and to the communities that exist down there. So the purpose of the bridge is not only to serve Silvertown Keith is to serve the Royal Docks communities at large. So that's the reason for those landing points. Then why is it um, the curved design? The key point to that actually is around level access, okay? because we need to get over three metres so that smaller vessels can get underneath. That's a prerequisite. And then we need to get down again to the other side. To do that straight across, actually you can't achieve that with, a, with the level access. You end up having to have ramps. So the the... The curved design serves that purpose so we can have level access all the way. And then the reason it changes is, of course, we need to open as well in the middle to allow large vessels through, which is why there's the, in effect, the straight bit there. And actually, it's a it's a shorter route in terms of metres, point to point, than were you to go directly across the dock. And then, of course, you're going to have to walk along the part of the side of XL to get to the crossrail station. So this, this is actually the, the shortest way to get from A to B whilst still complying with the need to get up three metres and to be level access. Um, that is really helpful. Thank you. Um, John, did you have another question? And then I think I'm going to move us to the vote. Chair, my, uh, my co colleagues uh, asked those questions. Excellent. <laughs> and between you, you've asked all the other questions that I had as well. So good job. Um, could I, um, I hesitate to ask you to share your screen. <laughs> do, you, do you want to have a go? See if it can be done quickly. And if not, <laughs> we'll see if we're able to share the screen and bring up the planning officer recommendation for this item. Um, and if we can't, we'll proceed in any case. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> you're, now the, you're now the host. Shirley. Hello. Hello, Chair. Can I share from my side? It might be easier. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having to I'm having to log I'm having to log in again. So 
Uh, um, sorry, Shelly, can you make, uh, yeah, can you give me the authorization yeah. to share the screen, please? Thank you very much for that, Marina. If you could have a go, we'd be grateful. We'll just make you joint host to see if you can share. And as I say, if not, we'll, we'll just move on to the vote in regardless. To be able to share now, Marina. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. Um, as per our papers, the committee is asked to agree the reasons for approval in this report and delegate authority, et cetera. Um, can I please ask all those in favor to raise their hands? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. That item is approved. Um, the final item on our agenda tonight, I believe is just the date of the next meeting. Um, could members please note that it's been moved from the 13th of June <clears throat> And it's now on the, I think that should be the 20th of June. Is it? 20th, 20th of June. <laughs> and it's on the 20th of June. Um, this is the, our last meeting of the municipal year. Thank you so much to those members who've been um, members of the committee all year. I very much appreciated it. Um, and thank you. With that, the meeting is closed. Thank you, thank thank you, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you.